want to put this thought in your mind. Look at me. It's not what it looks like. God told me to tell you that this morning. That even I've been through some sickness, through some things, but it's not what it looks like. God is still working on me. I want to thank God for all of you, all of the prayers, and all of I just can't stay away from Galilee. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I just can't stay. But I thank God for bringing me this far. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm blessed. You know that say it like you need to say it.
prepared an app for our offering. We're going to ask our nurses to come. Another uh, announcement. I think it, Jennifer, is that right? Terry lost his brother. On last week, I forgot to make the announcement while well, I wasn't here, but uh, Terry, Jennifer's husband, lost her brother, lost his brother. And let's pray for the Mel family. Amen.
the Lord has given us an increase. Uh, let me say a little bit louder because someone just still that got it. The Lord has gave Galilee an increase. <laughs> we thank God for this young child. Come now, give a life to Christ. It is our duty, after the baptism takes place, that we are all the teachers of this great church, including the pastor, we are to train that child up in the way she would go. And, and, and I'm glad that we have, in our youth department, we have some great teachers. And check praying God and teach us the word of God. We thank God for the parents of this child. The choir comes and take us on. We are going to now, but that is not a preparing for baptism. Amen. Thank you. 
You gotta love everybody. Everybody. Not those that don't love you. You gotta love those that don't even love you. We have a lot of people in the church not loving one another. And think they're fooling God. You're not fooling God by your action. It's not how high you jump. It's how you walk when you land. We can jump high. Praise God. Get the people all excited. But do you love them? Do you love them anyway? Let us pray, oh gracious God, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We come before you just to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've already done. Thank you for all that you're going to do. Lord, create in us a right spirit. Create in us, oh my God, a loving spirit. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we don't know how to pray. And we don't even know what to pray for. Thank God for your Holy Spirit. You told the woman at the well, you must worship in spirit and in truth. We realize, Father, that you're spirit. And you also said that you will not leave them us confidence. The Holy Spirit is living within us. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. Not the flesh. You said in the word, that's no good thing in the flesh. And we understand that. We know that. But we will do everything we can to try to please the flesh. But Lord, we want to please you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. We didn't wake up by ourselves, but it was you and your Holy Spirit. Text us this morning, and we saw a brand new day. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you've already done. You know, the, the one that's going to break the bread of life. Give them strength. Give them strength to preach your holy and divine word. We ask you, Father, to bless this church in a special way. Help us, Father. Father, what we can't do without you. We need you every day of our lives. And Lord, we cannot do without you. And we realize that we cannot do without you. There's no way we can do without you, Almighty God. Create us a right spirit. And Lord, we thank you. We love you. We pray you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. God is good.
and give me strength to do your will. I ask it all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be coming from the 1st Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. All right, all right. And it reads, excuse me, I'm going to be coming from the new international version of the Bible. And it reads, Three things remain. And by the way, I just go with what's on this on the screen because it reads different in the New International Version. And now by by faith, hope, and charity, these three remain. But the greatest of these is charity. In the New International Version, you may be seated. In a new international version, it reads, the greatest of these is love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand what Paul is saying here. Paul was in Corinth. And the Corinthians were a beautiful city. It was a wealthy city. It was a city that had pretty much almost like any other city that is of now. But Paul was sent to Greece. He wasn't sent to Corinth until he was talked to in a, in a vision from Jesus. See, Jesus made Paul the apostles to the Gentiles. And he sent Paul to Greece. Paul was first in Macedonia. And the people there especially the Jews, didn't like what Paul was saying. So Paul had this, this understanding. He was like, okay, if you don't want to hear the word of God, that's no problem. It's on your head. So Paul had to flee Macedonia for his sake. And he went, he went south into Ache, which is the city of Corinth. Now Paul was not one to linger anywhere where they didn't want to hear the word. But he was told in a vision by Jesus to go to Corinth and preach there. He said, I have many people there that will listen to you. So Paul went to Corinth, which was a wealthy city. It was like any other city. It was a, it was a port city where they did a lot of trading. So naturally in a city where they do a lot of trading, you got to have a lot of people that have beautiful things, people of merchants, you know, who had businesses, but it was a corrupt city. Corinth was known for its prostitution, its fornication. There was a lot of corruption in the city of Corinth. But Paul had a few people who wanted to know about the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he stayed in Corinth. A 
a year and a half to two years teaching the Word of God. He was one there. So when Paul left, he was under this understanding that the church would go on. But then there were some problems in the church. And the people of Corinth, who were believers, wrote to Paul. And this is where the epistle comes in. An epistle is no more than a letter that is wrote from the church back to the people of the church. So Paul wrote 1 Corinthians and he also wrote 2 Corinthians. But we're going to deal with 1 Corinthians this morning. Paul answered a lot of questions in this letter to the Corinthian people. And he told them the correct way of doing things. And there were a lot of people, false teachers in the church after Paul left. And he told them that there were going to be false teachers and what to do. And 1 Corinthians is about 16 chapters. But in the 13 is what I want to deal with right now. Three words. Faith, hope, and love. And this is pretty much where we stand today. In our world. We still have the corruption all over the world. Corruption is here to stay until God comes home. Paul said, faith, hope, and love. Is what's going to get us through this. Now I want to give, I'm going to start out dealing with faith first. Faith, as we remember, and some of us forget, in Hebrews 11, 1 through 9. It states, faith works in each and every one of us. Okay? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God made everything. He made us. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by he being dead, yet speaking. Faith from Abel. See, God was, God, God was favorable of Abel. See, Cain, which were the older of the two, was a man of the world. He said so much God didn't like him. But Abel, Abel was a favorite of God. He pleased God. 
So much that he's speaking from the grave right now. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him for before this translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was taken. He didn't see that. Can you imagine now if God took one of us because we were favorable to him? God is God is good. And, and, and we need to understand that the things that we do in life, we're trying to be good Christians. But good, Christ comes from here. He comes from, from inside of us. And we need to understand that this is the only way and we're going to get to God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that this is a reward, a rewarder of them that death diligently seek Him. We got to seek Him. See. We get so caught up in the world that the love of God is took from us. We see things around us and we deal with it, but we forget where our love comes from. We forget this. You know, that's why God doesn't give us everything we want. Because if he did, we wouldn't please him. We wouldn't honor him. There's no wonder. Oh yes, he gives us gifts. He gives us things. But do we truly, truly Love him. Yeah. Or oh, is it the love of the things that he gives us? So we got to be careful about this. We truly do. Because we want things, but if we don't want to serve him. We don't want to give God his props, as the young people say. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Yes. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared enough to the slave, to save, to the saving, to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became higher of the righteous, which is by faith. These are the things that God put in us. By faith, we are here. By faith. By faith, we can conquer a lot of things. By faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after, should after receive for inheritance, obey, and he went out not knowing whether he went. So we've got a cause for us. We don't need to question why he called for us. We just need to know that he calls for us. And we should obey. See, God have mercy. Come on. God talks to each and every one of us. It's up to us to listen. 
It's up to us to listen. By faith, sojourn in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the highest with him, the same promise. He made the same promise to Abraham, he made to Isaac and Jacob, which was son of Abraham. Now, I have to stop right there. I'm going to put a pen in it. Have you ever realized that God pretty much deals in three? Three. Threes. Threes. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I think about the threes that have happened in my life. I've been a member of three different churches. Tabernacle Baptist Church, which is over in Tinsville, I think that is. Or Smithfield. Smithfield. Tabernacle, the Prince of Peace, which was a Lutheran church in Kingston. I grew up in as well. And now, I'm here at Galilee Baptist Church. Three churches. I've been in four different schools three years at a time. I went to Northside Elementary for three years. I went to Winona Elementary for three years. I went to A.T. Gaston for three years. I went to Winona High School for three years. I joined the Navy. Been on three different cruises. Threes. Threes. I don't know if anyone else in here has experience with threes, but you need to look at that. Every time God want to wake, every time God want to talk to me, guess what time He wake me up? Three, three around three, three thirty, three forty five. Sometimes I can't even sleep through the night. I get up and I say, "Okay, let's talk." If I was married, my wife probably would think I was crazy. I would probably have to get up and, and get out of bed and go somewhere and just, you know, hey, have a conversation. But God talks to us when He wants to talk to us. Everybody has their own individual time with God. But let's carry on. By faith, he adjourned into a land, of, a, a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the hires with him, the same promise. Okay. The same promise he made to Abraham, he made to Isaac and Jacob as well. By faith, he told them that their numbers would be large. I can't go verbatim by the scripture. But this is what he is telling us. Hebrews 11, 17, and 22. Just put that up there for me. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. 
for faith. Now we know in John 3.16 that God gave up Jesus, which was his only begotten son. How many of us can do that? How many of us have that much faith today that we can give up our only child? You can raise your hand, aren't we? By faith. By faith. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall their seed be called. Their seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. Isaac had the faith that none of us had. I, I, I'm, I'm just so, you know, when I think about these things, it makes me want to have the faith that these prophets and these apostles had in God. Sure enough, we're just followers. But just think, if we had the faith to do what Abraham did, to follow God, what our life would look like. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, Blessed by, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship, learning upon the top of his, leaning upon the top of his staff. You know, faith. By, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel when, and gave commandment concerning his bones by faith Joseph didn't want to be left in Egypt so he told the Israelites when God delivered them from the Egyptians not to leave him dig my bones up Take me back to the promised land. Wow, how many people <laughs> can say they actually dug somebody up and took them somewhere else? In today's life, when we are Buried, that's usually the place where we're going to stay. I don't, me myself, I, I don't want to be buried. I don't want to be buried. I do not. I'm telling my child now, I do not want to be there. Burn me. Burn me. And then spread my ashes on the Gulf of Mexico. I want to be buried at sea. That's the old tradition of a, of a sailor. When he's on cruise, and he makes the wish to be buried at sea. He is laid to rest at sea. They give him a ceremony right there. 
But, you know, when we all, when God comes back, the dead, and Christ will rise first, right? Everything that's dead in the sea is going to be taken from the sea. Everything that's dead on land is going to be taken from the land. And then, the rest of us will be caught up if we're still here. But no one knows the day or the time of his return. Am I correct? We all are just living right now, trying to live our best life in Jesus' name, trying to live like Jesus wants us to live, like he told us to live. But let's move on to the second, the second word, hope. I have my cars in order here. There it goes. Take me to Romans 15, verse 1 through 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let everyone of us please his neighbor, for his good is to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that are, the uh, reproaches of them that reproaches thee fell on me. For whatsoever things that were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Hope, you know, as adults we see hope different, but as a child, oh I hope a lot. I hope <laughs> that I wouldn't be chastised for a lot of things that I didn't do at home. You know how when you were supposed to do something and you know you were going to get in trouble and you hope that it didn't happen. I can think of one time in school, and I know my 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 brother is gonna laugh because him and my mother always tease me about this. One day in school, my mother came to we know in elementary, and I hope she didn't come, up. <laughs> but she did, and when she showed up. She showed out. I had the hope that my classmates would remember this in time. But my brother here, every time he sees my mother, he teases me about her coming to school and what she put on me. It's fun. You know, I'm an adult now. But sometimes I hope he wouldn't do it. <laughs> but it's all good. But hope, as a child, we hope for things. Because we didn't know to have faith. So hope. Hope was our only way of dealing with things. Hope. Romans 15 and 13. Please. 
Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We hope for things. Even as adults now. We hope when we don't know how to deal with faith. But God knows our heart. He knows our heart. You can hope all you want. But if you ain't living right, that goes out the window. We hope for things that when we get in trouble, we hope for God to fix it for us. We pray and hope. Prayer goes with hope. We know that. But due to time, I'm going to I'm going to go a little bit faster because I know you want to get out of here. And so in my conclusion, I'm going to come to the word love. Love. What do we know about love? Does anybody know what love is? Love. We're supposed to love each other. Love each other. And look how we're living today. There's so much killing going on. It's true when they say, you know, the devil is busy. He knows what time it is. He's going here and there to destroy everything he can. And he destroying us because we can't see what God is doing. We can't see it. I believe in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, am I right? 2 and 9, where it says, No man has seen. No man has heard. Now, I'm, 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 I'm Ed living here now. And there it is. But as it is, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now let me just stop right there. We think we know what love is. We don't know what love is. We're perpetrating. We know that we love the ones that we want to have pretty much in our lives. We love our children. Or some of us love our children. I can't say we all love our children because we got too many children that's just a spray right now. We love our offspring, should I say. Because when we love our children, half our children would be out here in the street committing crimes. We would know where they are. We would have raised them in the right way in the church to know what love is. What we think love is is not love. Yeah, true enough, we take on a spouse, we love them, but when things go wrong, we run. That's not love. 
I don't know what it is, but it ain't love. I wanted the kind of love where I met someone and I loved them so much and they had the same equal love for me to start a family. And love that family, the offsprings of that family, so they could know how to love. See, in the first place, we don't know when we meet someone, the love that they have in their life, the love that they were raised on. I promise you, I had love in my life. I had love in my life. I have love in my life. I had a grandmother that if some of you knew her, they called her Miss Henry. This woman was still love. I don't know what she got it from, but I'm glad she had it. Because she placed it on me and showed me what love was. See, you don't know how a person is raised, whether they had love in their life, they had love from the parent that raised them to the love they have now. If you had someone in your life that had pure love from another generation to this one, then you can portray that same love to your offspring. Love is, I, I like in the, in the movie Tom Hanks did uh, called Forrest Gump. If any of you seen that movie, Tom Hanks played a very, very good part in that movie. Tom said in the movie, love is what love does. That's what his mama told him. Love is what love does. And that's, I, I, I listen to that, and that's a true saying. Love is is what love does. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8, Paul describes what love is. In the first verse, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am the I, I am the calm as a sounding brass, a tingling cymbal. In other words, what he's saying is, if you don't have love in your heart, you're just blowing smoke. Love is, love is, mm. and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have still faith, I, I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. I am nothing. You have all the prophecy, you can move a mountain, but if you don't have love, you don't have nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to be the poor, and though I give my body to burn and have not love, it profit me nothing. If you're going to walk the walk or talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. That's just like saying you don't hate it. I'm going to do good to my brothers because God is looking at me. But if you don't have love in your heart, it's worth nothing. You ain't doing it for show. You're doing it because of love. Charity suffers charity suffer, suffer long and is kind. Charity even Indian, not charity Vaunted, vaunted, 
not itself. It is puffed up. Love. You got to have love. Paul is telling us this is what love is. We got to have love. Don't not behave itself unseemly. Seek it not her own is not easily provoked. Thinking, thinking no evil. Hmm. Rejoice, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in the truth. Beware of all, beware all things, believe in all things, hope in all things, endure in all things. And in and, and, and verse 8, charity never follows better, but whether there are, whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall fail. They shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. You're, 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 you're smoking. You're, you're blowing smoke. If you don't have love, none of this, none of this is good. None of this is good. None of this is good. Love is what love does. Love is. Seeing my mother sitting here in church this morning, listen to me bring the word of God. Love is watching my granddaughter being baptized in this church this morning. Love is what love does. Love is is having a daughter that loves her children. Love is. But the biggest thing love is, love is a man who died on a cross for your sins and mine. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Love is that he didn't stay there. He rests for three days and three nights. Love is. On that third day, he arose with all power and all glory. And he still is in charge of things in this world. Love is. Love is is what love does. We should love one another. Stop hating. Stop talking about each other. Stop doing evil to each other. Love is, is what love does. I hope and pray and I have faith that someone in this church this morning got a word that they can live on. That they know that love is is God. Let us receive this. The door of my father's house is open. Love is coming to him who given all things. Love is. Love is the power of God. Come. Let someone come right now asking what it is I must do to be saved. Remember that. Let us love.
Daddy Moynihan. Amen. God bless you. We welcome you here in Galilee. And we thank God that you come today. And we hope that you were blessed by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements? Wait just one minute. Wait just one minute. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Sister heard that she lost her sister a few weeks ago. And uh, now she's not by herself because she has so much family around her. Oh, yeah. Oh, that loss of her family fill the whole house up. Amen. They fill that whole house up. And she got so many people that love her. Amen. And Sister Her, we love you here in Galilee. You know, Pastor love you. I went over to the house and she was she was bragging about Sister Coleman. I said, what about me? She said, you all right. <laughs> <laughs> you all right, so as long as I'm all right, I'll Hey man, God bless you. Listen, on um, next Sunday, the secretary will have a problem with getting our certificates, but we'll next Sunday she'll have it fixed, and we'll make a presentation. That right, the secretary, where she'll make that presentation to you on next Sunday. Amen. Thank God for our baby who come today. She's in children's church. I think that's where they are today. But don't for next Sunday we will make a certificate presentation to the young lady, our, our baby. Amen. Amen. God has found on me. He has me free. Thank you. 